And the headlines again. The trains are running once more, but there's continuing disagreement between the rail board and the train driver's leader over the terms of their agreement to discuss flexible working. John DeLorean's talks with the government over the future of his Belfast car firm broke up in the last hour. The outcome won't be known until tomorrow. And two national newspapers, The Sun and The Star, have apologised for publishing holiday photographs of the Princess of Wales in a bikini. As it from me, John Humphreys will be here tomorrow night and I'll be in Dublin to report on the result of the Irish general election. Good night. Good evening to you. Well, the anticyclone over Norway there is keeping these cold, cloudy, southeasterly winds going. Uh, the fronts here are edging in just a little bit closer to bring a little rain into some southern and western parts, and you can see them on the view from space tonight there. The thick cloud out to the west there is the uh, thickest of the front, but there's a weakish one just ahead of it there. These will edge in as time goes by, as I say. A lot of cloud streaming up over the country there, you'll notice. Uh, the satellites underline the UK tonight. I don't know why, because the weather isn't all that great. In fact, it's going to be a misty night right through the country, and a cold one too, although only one or two places will have a frost, I think, during the night. Uh, the odd spot of rain down in the southwest approaches here, but not very much to speak of, and a little in the southeast that's going to die away, as is that rain that's still going in northeast Scotland. And tomorrow, well, dry in most parts of the country, still a lot of cloud about, not very much bright weather anywhere. There will be still a little rain about in the West Channel here, Channel Islands as far east as about the Isle of Wight. And later on in the day, I think uh, Northern Ireland and the western side of Scotland there might get the odd spot, but most other people dry. Uh, the temperatures no higher than they were today anywhere. That's to say, a little on the cold side, most parts of the country. That's it. Good night to you. Beginning tomorrow, a new series, McLean's Law, starring James Arness as Detective Jim McLean. What a business. When I see five keys of coke, we're in business. It's in the car. Sit tight. I'll be right back. And alone. Oh, uh, by the way... Please, hold it! 23, Scotty's been shot. Take the car! Now, maybe it went wrong this time, but you give him credit for all the times it went right, huh? Now, what are you, the shop steward all of a sudden? No, I just don't see any reason to take a good cop down. I got a better purpose for this. What? Like taking down a cop killer. Jim hurts for you and your guys maybe more than you deserve. But he also hurts for that dead cop whose family has some justice coming to him. Fire! Jim McLean leads the hunt for a policeman's killer. McLean's Law begins tomorrow at 9.25 on BBC One. The 40-minute documentary starting shortly on BBC Two is about one of Britain's most exciting young boxers and his dynamic trainer, Bomber and Brendan. British television's first ever daily magazine programme came into being exactly 25 years ago. To mark this anniversary, BBC One now takes a nostalgic look back. It showed people real in the raw. It was an exhilarating, challenging, at times almost nerve-wracking roller coaster of a life. She was a new mistress. She gave me the keys to the world. I was always the loner on the outer rim in Guatemala or Alaska, while everyone else was back here whooping it up. It was the most exacting job uh, I've done in my life. I even include the time when I was a war correspondent. In one way or another, we were as it were, laying down the ground rules of so much of television grammar that is today taken wholly for granted. Good evening. Good evening. Twenty-five years ago tonight, I introduced a new experiment in television. Britain's first ever five nights a week topical magazine program. It's hard to believe now, but until that date, February the 18th, 1957, there was no television between six and seven in the evening. That hour was called the toddler's truce, the hour of peace when the children could be put to bed without protesting they were missing something. The end of the truce left a big gap and the Tonight program was created to fill it. It went on to run over eight years and 1800 editions. 
Well, tonight we're going to look back a quarter of a century on the program that came to be, if not part of the British way of life, at least part of the British way of high tea. Let's start with a very quick reminder of the sort of things it looked at and the way it looked at them. A world of magic. 